This is part one of tree biology with a focus on patterns of growth, resilience, and dormancy. In our northern latitudes, um, we have seasonal growth patterns in British Columbia. With what we see is in the spring, we have root and diameter growth on trees. Height and diameter growth tends to happen late spring and early summer, and then a return to root growth and diameter growth late summer and fall. So what you can observe here is that height growth is most, when it is most rapid, root growth tends to be minimal and vice versa. Tree growth occurs in two different ways. There's primary growth and secondary growth. Primary growth refers to root and shoot tips, elongating and um, uh, lengthening. Secondary growth refers to the increasing thickness of growth of stems and branches. Mary stems are tissues um, that occur in these areas of uh, primary and secondary growth. So at the tips and roots and stems, you have apical Mary stems. Again, those are associated with the primary growth. So the lengthening of roots and the lengthening of the stem. And then just under the surface of um, roots, as well as under the surface of the, the stems or the branches as well, you have lateral Mary stems. So right under that cork cambium that we talked about in the anatomy, and this is the area of secondary growth. The seasonal growth patterns, um, the presence of dominant terminal buds, vertical stems with whorls of annual growth, this results in, in a conical form. So conifers have this conical form with this dominant tip um, and then branching along. And this kind of form favors actually colder climates. It tends to shed snow very effectively. It's quite resistant to winds. Um, it's quite efficient in producing stem wood. So all the energy is focused on the primary stem as opposed to investments in branching. Um, although there are branches um, with deciduous or um, trees say like alder or big leaf maple, you have a lot more branching. So a lot of investment in those and that type of wood. Um, and then of also optimal exposure to foliage of uh, the light. So the, the shape of it is optimal for that. What we see is that as days become shorter, nights become cooler, in northern temperatures, um, northern climates, uh, we are determinate species like Douglas fir, pine, and true firs, and we'll talk about determinate species a bit more later. Um, they tend to increase in frost hardiness and dormancy. Frost hardiness, what that is, is the minimum temperature when seedlings can be exposed to cool temperatures without being damaged, so that minimum temperature. And dormancy is a lack of growth response, generally in the um, apical Mary stem, so the, the shoots stop growing when conditions are unfavorable. And actually in the summer, this can also induce a weak dormancy which can disappear if fall rains come along, so moisture becomes available, but you can get this weak dormancy. And then during fall conditions, because of that decreasing amount of light, so decreasing photo period and temperatures, lower temperatures, it starts to induce full dormancy. Stress resistance to frost hardiness, um, drought tolerance reaches a maximum in the winter, so that's when our trees are most stress resistant. And it declines when you start to have increasing temperatures in the spring as the cambial and root growth begins. Um, earlier I referred to determinant species and gave some examples as Douglas fir, true fir, spruce, pine. In determinant species such as CW, which is Western red cedar, um, they appear to be able to grow tops and shoots whenever conditions are suitable. So they're they're not determinate, they're indeterminate. In other words, they can grow whenever conditions are suitable. And they don't tend to develop this type of frost hardiness or dormancy like um, Douglas fir does. And the timing of bud burst is very, in the case of say Douglas fir, is very strongly controlled by the temperatures to which the dormant seedling was exposed from early winter to the time of that bud burst. So there's like this genetic control that um, tells the buds and the trees when it's time to burst. 
we'll be focusing on buds and to point out there can be categories in three different types of ways by position on the tree we've talked about apical or the lateral buds on a tree by growth form or growth habit so determinant species like Douglas fir or indeterminate species like western red cedar partially determinate species an example is, is western hemlock or by function so some buds are vegetative, some are sexual, or some are a combination of both. Determinant species, um, some examples again, Douglas fir, pine, spruce, true firs. Um, what happens with determinant species is that they, their growth is predetermined by the bud that was produced um, in the summer and fall. Determinant, in other words, they have a definitive end. So conifers, um, such as Douglas fir, they cannot grow beyond the limits imposed by the dormant bud from the previous year. So for instance, if you have a very small bud that forms and, and then it goes dormant through the winter, no matter how good the growing conditions are on the site the following year, the shoot originating from that bud will be small. So it's genetically predetermined by the dormant bud. In the case of indeterminate species like western red cedar, um, growth can continue to grow and elongate indefinitely um, and it's not constrained by this reproductive structure, this little bud. Western red cedar exhibits indeterminate growth patterns and that means that the apical Mary stem can continue to be active whenever conditions are suitable. So if there's a two-week period in the winter when conditions are fantastic for growth, we can see growth at that point. Some examples of partial determinant species are western hemlock, um, which has preformed cells in the bud, as do determinant species, but it can also have some continual growth when environmental conditions are suitable. So it doesn't necessarily go into that deep dormancy like western, um, Douglas fir. So what does this mean for silviculture? And maybe what I should point out is that what silviculture is, in case you're not familiar with that term, Silviculture, we're referring to the practice of growing and establishing forests. Okay, that's what silviculture represents. Um, let's talk about two examples. Here we have a suppressed seedling. You can see it growing right beside the, the hard hat here. And here's a seedling with good growing conditions. So what you see here is you see limited growth. Um, perhaps it was constrained by light or soil conditions. It essentially did not realize its potential growth as determined by the bud. In this kind of environment here, you have lots of lateral growth, robust needles, and large buds. So let's have a look at the suppressed seedling. What you see here are that the second year on the site, it wasn't shaded, but it's impacted by the previous years. So this year's growth was quite good, but this previous year's growth, okay, was shaded. And although this was a fantastic seedling with a lot of potential, it did not meet its potential. And now this little section here is a weak point on the seedling. So despite there being good growth subsequent, um, this is a, it's a, these two points are weak points. Whereas the seedling that um, reached optimum growth, you see the second year growth has, is fantastic. There was very um, long length stem and that the buds will continue likely to do the same thing in the following year. And the first year growth, it wasn't shaded. The soil conditions were good, needles are robust. And because of that, um, it sort of had a good start. I'm just gonna speak to um, another type of buds. So these lateral buds um, or axillary buds, um, they can grow under branches. That, um, that we call whorls around a, a certain point on the stem. Um, and at times, some of these buds between the whorls um, may be buried below the bark, and these become epicormic buds. And these are like dormant buds beneath the bark. And what happens is that in sometimes if you have some damage on the tree along the stem, for instance, if you did some pruning, it can trigger these buds to burst. And then you get these adventitious shoots. And the shoots are generally what, what happens is these are 
They grow in unusual places. Um, they develop on tissue other than the apical tissues, like along the stem, and this can degrade the value of the wood. They often form, like I said earlier, when there's damage um, from pruning or exposure to light. Ambitious branches often form around these epicormic shoots. 